Tonight is one of the biggest nights in AEW's short history. We'll talk all about it in a minute. But first, some breaking news from WWE. The next and perhaps last inductee to the 2024 class for the Hall of Fame has been announced. And it is Thunderbolt Patterson. Thunderbolt Patterson. Now, I don't know, as much as I am a historian of professional wrestling, as much as I like to go back, 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 back in the day and watch a lot, learn a lot about what I wasn't around for, uh, I, I can't BS you and tell you that I know much about what a Thunderbolt Patterson even is. So I will direct you to Bleacher Report, who gives us a little bit of history on Thunderbolt Patterson. Patterson, 82 now starred in several prominent pro wrestling promotions during the territory days from the 60s to the 80s, including Georgia Championship Wrestling, Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling, and Championship Wrestling from Florida. Arguably, the biggest accomplishment of Patterson's career was winning the NWA Florida Heavyweight Championship from the legendary Bruiser Brody in 1976. Patterson was also a one-time NWA Brass Knuckles champion, a two-time NWA Georgia television champion, and a multi-time tag team champion, and Georgia and Mid-Atlantic with partners such as Ole Anderson, Tony Atlas, and Jerry Briscoe. That's some pretty good company to have. So, um, clearly, cool accomplishment, great for Patterson and the family and friends and maybe even acquaintances that will be able to catch this induction. Uh, very cool and and clearly deserving of such and has earned such an honor. Very cool. I will say this. This is a very odd class of Hall of Famers. This is very weird. Paul Levesque McMahon waited last minute anyway, right? This whole last seven days, he's just been chucking names at us. The entire class being announced within like a week. <laughs> it was last Monday when Paul Heyman was announced. A day or two later, Bull Nakano. Then the U.S. Express. Then we find out uh, Muhammad Ali. And now Thunderbolt Patterson. It's a very odd class. Again, individually, all of them worthy. No question. That's very cool. Such an honor. But collectively, when you're trying to think of, of an entire class, this is very odd because, you know, it's not it's no longer just like a separate night either. Don't forget, you know, you have you have the same fans that are buying that ticket to Smackdown when Smackdown goes off the air. A ring crew is coming in, taking down the ropes, putting up a podium with a microphone, and that same crowd for SmackDown is going to be witnessing the Hall of Fame live. A lot of people, man, they don't know anything about the U.S. Express. They certainly are not going to know a lot about Thunderbolt Patterson. I doubt they're going to know Bull Nakano. And Muhammad Ali, even. They're just going to know some stories of. And you say, well, BC, that's the perfect night to learn about them all. That's what the Hall of Fame is for. It's also about, it's about watching the ones that you got to see enter the Hall of Fame as well. So, all you really have is Paul Heyman that they truly know. And, and they get to hear that speech and, and share in that moment with Paul Heyman. And that's a dude that's very much active still. Very active. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. He has told you that. So lately, the, the new normal is just throwing people that are active and not going anywhere anytime soon, just throwing them into the Hall of Fame. Rey Mysterio last year, Paul Heyman this year, and next year we're hearing that Tiffany Stratton is going into the Hall of Fame. A little too early, I feel, but hey, if they're saying that Tiffany Stratton, it's her time to go in, it's her time. Because we're just throwing active wrestlers into the mix. So Paul Heyman is truly all they're really going to know. And then they're going to have to sit through a lot of stories. And a lot of speeches from 
or people that, that, that really don't have that extra level of emotion and you can't blame them, right? That's no disrespect to the U.S. Express, who I love, Barry Windham, Four Horsemen, Mike Rotundo, who was Money Incorporated, right? If you told me he was going into the Hall of Fame with Ted DiBiase, I would have been fine with that too. So I love these dudes. Again, I can't tell you I know a lot about a Thunderbolt Patterson, but very cool. But I'm thinking about that audience live. I'm thinking about a lot of the audience at home. That's a lot to get through where they can't really obtain that next level of intrigue or excitement or that level of fondness. Because aside from Paul Heyman, you're asking them to go way back to, again, a lot of wrestlers where they just they weren't able to even see any of their work. So one or two, one or two per Hall of Fame class, no question, right? Let your audience learn, um, and maybe maybe there's enough there to go back and, and check out their work. Very cool, right? So one or two inductees every single year. Um, you can have them just be names a lot of fans don't know. The majority of the fans were not able to see their work. But when you have three, four, the bulk of your class... I mean, you're talking nobody, aside from Paul Heyman, guys, nobody in this class was with WWE for 20 years, not 10, not 15, 20. Bull Nakano was like on that line around 95, right? It's 2024. She was around 95, 96, maybe with the Alundra Blaze feud. And then Bull Nakano was gone. So she was like mid nineties. It's about 20 years. IRS and Ted DiBiase, you're looking at early 90s was the heyday for IRS, Mike Rotunda, right? And I'm talking way past U.S. Express. Muhammad Ali was early 80s, right? I think he only had one appearance for WWE. Wasn't that WrestleMania? So that was like early 80s. And that was it, by the way. So that's like the celebrity portion wing, and it's Muhammad, and and he doesn't have a lot of history with WWE. And now Thunderbolt Patterson. You'd have to go back to 60s to the 80s was his heyday. So it's, it's a lot. It's a lot on top of one another. It's, it's, you're asking a lot from your audience. It's just a very odd class to assemble. And, and that looks to be it, right? You can't keep adding names. I mean, we were all expecting Bray Wyatt to be a co-headliner with Paul Heyman, for instance, right? Doesn't look like Batista is going to be getting the nod this year. But that would make six different inductions. Who do you have? Paul Heyman, Bull Nakano, U.S. Express, Muhammad Ali, and now Thunderbolt Patterson. That's a long night. These people just watched two hours of SmackDown and then an hour of dark matches and main event matches or whatever else they're filming. So that's three hours of wrestling from around 7 to 10. And then you're asking them to do the half an hour to hour setup. And then another three hours of Hall of Fame speeches. Video packages. The inductors and their speeches for the inductees. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. And you're asking them to sit through a lot. What is really exciting them for this Hall of Fame? You know what I mean? Like, it's cool. We get to honor people like Rotundo and Barry Windham and and Thunderbolt and Muhammad. But, you know, honoring them and, and being truly excited and intrigued to see these speeches and these dudes come out that you've watched for years and you finally get to see them go into the Hall of Fame. We don't really have that. This is a very odd class of Hall of Famers. Again, much love and respect are deserved, earned. What an honor. It's weird to assemble all of them into one Hall of Fame class. It's very odd. And I do not blame anybody. This is no, this is not about them individually. Again, collectively, I do not blame any fan for saying this is a weak class because I doubt very much they mean individually. They mean collectively, it is a weak class. It's not a lot to be excited about or to think, oh, Hall of Fame, I can't wait for X, Y, and Z. And this is coming from a dude that appreciates all of these dudes and gals' work, by the way. Bull Nakano and Alundra Blaze. And even though it was only one year she was with WWE, that was the biggest women's rivalry in WWE or even pro wrestling at that time. And on the flip side... You have, of course, the family of Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda. So 
uh, I mean, any version of them, whether it's the Four Horsemen or Barry on his own or Mike on his own or with the U.S. Express or with Money Incorporated, any version of that I'm going to love. Uh, Paul Heyman, active or not, always going to be good to hear his stories. Muhammad Ali, ugh. I mean, it's, it is what it is. I understand he's a legend, but in terms of WWE, I mean, we're just doing what we've done a million times. We're honoring Muhammad, right? We've done that a million times. And now WWE is going to do the same thing for basically one appearance. But that's the celebrity wing for you. You know, meanwhile, you got guys like Regis Philman who has done, he's went out of his way to help professional wrestling, WWE more specifically. Regis has brought in so many wrestlers for his morning show in the 80s and the 90s into the 2000s. I believe into the 2000s. Either way, he's brought so many people on. He has gone to WWE. He's done many appearances. WrestleMania 7, one of the brightest spots for Regis Philman. And he's not even in the hall. So that's what I mean. It's very odd. We're leaving some people out. You know, the Bam Bam Bigelows are out. And the, you know, the Bull Nakanos are in. You know, where's the, you know, it's it's just like we're, we're just chucking baloney at the wall. And if it lands on a name, that's who's going to go in. Oh, Thunderbolt. Who? Well, Thunderbolt. You remember Thunderbolt. <laughs> well, all right. Bring them out there. WWE is going to be thrilled. The audience, the fans, they're going to be riveted by this. You know, right after Bull Nakano, who's right after the U.S. Express. Um, it's it's a very odd class to assemble. So that's some breaking news. WWE's Hall of Fame class. It is very, uh, again, very cool honor. Great for everybody. Collectively, whoo, that's a weird class. <laughs> it's a weird, it's a, it's it's uh, Paul Levesque McMahon. It's something, man. I, I don't know what it is, but then again, I don't know what Paul Levesque McMahon is doing, period. So I, I don't know what he's doing anymore. I, I don't think he knows what he's doing anymore. Uh, but they'll just blame it on The Rock or something, right? Because they can't blame it on Vince right now. They can't blame it on everybody else, and they don't want to blame Triple H for anything. So there's uh, these reports that The Rock is calling the shots for the Hall of Fame because he's got nothing better to do. So Thunderbolt Patterson will be the... Uh, who knows? Maybe The Rock will do the presentation. How's that? Rock can do the presentation for uh, Thunderbolt. Anyway, that's what I got for you guys, man, on the breaking news. Newest and perhaps the last inductee, Thunderbolt Patterson. I will just have to um, do more research on exactly who that is, but... Looks like it's very deserved and well-earned. Good job, Thunderbolt. Welcome to the hall. Now on to AEW Dynamite tonight. One of the biggest shows in this company's short history. And I mean that wholeheartedly. 110 plus percent. The debut of Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, is tonight. That is confirmed. There is no, it's not just a tease or a speculation. Um, and I'm, I'm noticing that a lot of fans, they either love Mercedes, Sasha Banks, or they just don't. <laughs> There's not a lot of in between. Sasha, Mercedes is a very polarizing character. Now, we'll get to, we'll get to all of that in a minute. I want to give you just the latest of what Tony Khan is saying about this debut. And he's basically confirming this beforehand he's already been doing that with the teases with the boston <laughs> with the dollar signs and even in a recent social media post saying see you wednesday boston b-o-s-s -S, boss in in capitals so that tells you everything you need to know but in a recent interview he kind of he dives a little deeper and when he was asked about the teases and the speculation for wednesday and the question says, can we expect a new talent or two to show up? And Tony Khan's response was, and I quote, of course, I promise I will not disappoint the fans tonight. There has been an influx of huge names and tonight is the biggest show yet. When we launched AEW, it was the first time in many years that so many resources and such a strong roster of wrestlers have come together to form a new challenger promotion. Our roster continues to get deeper and better, and this has become a popular destination that top stars seek out. This is the perfect time to continue expanding 
and growing. That is what tonight is all about. AEW Big Business. With such a strong group of wrestlers in AEW today, we've come so far from the beginning of 2019. Now we have what I believe is the best roster in pro wrestling today. There are still so many great stars out there that we are always looking to add and strengthen our group. I think we will continue to try to strengthen whenever we can add someone's skills to make AEW even better. I think that constant innovation and the perpetual strides towards always wanting to get better are a big part of the spirit of AEW. And I think tonight's big business show on TBS will showcase that innovation and fighting spirit. So Sasha Banks is indeed showing up tonight. They made a show specifically for her. They made sure that it was in Boston at the TD Bank Arena. They made sure that they marketed, promoted this thing around Sasha without even adding her name to the marquee. But alluding to it, teasing and speculation abound to the most amplified of levels to the point where you know it was confirmed <laughs> before the teases even got too far. You were like, no, that's it. All I need to see was the dollar sign. We know what this is about. You made a show out of nowhere in Boston. A little themed PPV event called Big Business for TBS. Everybody knew, but now, now everybody, everybody is basically coming right out and saying, this is what's going down tonight. Renee Paquette, Soraya, Page, they just put out social media posts saying, uh, tonight, big bit or happy big business day, right? Well, can't wait to get to Boston. <laughs> you know, they're all, they're all hyped. Obviously, these are people that worked with Sasha in WWE, man, Renee and, and Paige. It's no coincidence that they are the most hyped to see Mercedes show up tonight. So now we go to the discussion, right? BC, why is this the biggest night or one of the biggest nights in the company's history? It's just a girl, BC. I mean, this is what you hear in the community, right? It's not going to move the needle at all, BC. You could be right. You could be right. That that's This is much different, and we're going to talk about that. But you absolutely could be right. You look at the dudes, the CM Punks, the Edges, and so many others. They show up with a big name, a big following, a big headline, and then it just falls back, right? The ratings either stay stagnant or they even go backwards. For CM Punk, they stayed stagnant, sometimes going backwards. When Edge debuted, unfortunately, right after they went backwards. Of course, that's not Edge's fault. But you've had all these dudes show up and they don't really move the needle. But we have yet to see for the female, somebody like Sasha Banks show up. Paige, S Soraya would have been the closest thing. And unfortunately, she just wasn't wrestling for years before she showed up to AEW. And that's unfortunate because of an injury. But Sasha's coming in as the greatest professional wrestler female-wise in the world, arguably. Or at least one of. Right? Those are facts. That's not just... <laughs> we're not just throwing out our favorite, right? Or that's not just a name being presented uh, subjectively. And then everybody goes, well, uh, I disagree, BC. Or uh, I think it's somebody else, BC. Well, you got to have the facts to back that up. Like, for instance, Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks. I say this all the time, like a broken record on this channel. She's everybody's best match or at least one of, right? That's how we know. That whether you like it or not, whether you like her or not, whether you love or hate Mercedes, Sasha Banks, doesn't even matter. She's the common denominator in everybody's greatest matches. That's how we know she's one of, if not the best female wrestler on the planet, because she constantly puts on the greatest match of everybody else's career. That's what I mean by facts, right? Like, BC has favorites. They don't always deserve to be at the top. I can't always say they're the best. For instance, hot take. This ain't gonna go over well. I like Jinder Mahal. I just do. I like Jinder. I'll be the first to tell you, he is nowhere near the best wrestler on the planet. Sorry, Jinder. I'll be the first to tell you, he probably shouldn't be holding a world title right now. Sorry, Jinder. Right? When you're a fan of somebody, you also have to be honest. You can tap into the fandom, but you always have to enter the realm of reality as well, if you're going to talk pro wrestling. 
Whether you love Sasha or not, Mercedes, the point is, the bottom line is, the fact is, she's the best. Whether it's a Charlie Flair, who they put to the top in WWE, right? She's all over the side of the buses, the side of the trailers. She's on all the marquees, all the programs, the signatures. It's always Charlie, 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 right? WWE loves their Charlotte. Vincent Kennedy McMahon always did, and Triple H loves her even more. Paul Levesque McMahon. Now, Charlotte is just not everybody's best match. She's not. She was not Bailey's best match. She was not Carmella's best match. She was not Zelina Vega's best match. She wasn't. She's just not, right? She's good in her own realms, and, and many people love her for different reasons. That's awesome. But she's just not. And, and you can go down the line with so many wrestlers the same way. Paige, Soraya. A lot of fans love her. It's sad that her WWE career got cut short, but even when she was there, she was not Nikki Bella's best match. She was not AJ Lee's best match. Maybe one of, depends on how you viewed those matches, but not everybody's best match. It just wasn't. And you can take that out of the realm of just the US too, by the way. Japan, right? And we can WWE assize this a little bit, right? We, we can... We can... Look at WWE's current Japan superstars like Asuka, Kari, Io, right? Whether they were in Japan or WWE, and this is as much as I love Asuka and Io and Kari, they weren't everybody's best match. They're just not, even in Japan. And Julia, Julia, the one thing, right? She's really good. A lot of people like BC, we love Julia, but she's not everybody's best match. Hope you see what I'm saying, but when you get to Mercedes, you cannot say that. Because she is everybody's best match, or at least one of. Carmella, Zelina Vega, and Alexa Bliss, Bailey several times, Charlotte several times, Ember Moon, uh, Athena, uh, Io, Io for sure, Bianca Belair, WrestleMania, stop man, Becky Lynch, Hell in a Cell, I mean you can go through everybody, and Sasha is everybody's, Mercedes is everybody's best match or at least one of the top three, right? She's just everybody's. It's just what she does. She goes out there and you could she'd be, be in there with a football helmet and she would make it a Melty Boy imaginary six, seven, eight star classic. She can go out there with a broomstick. She can go out there with a sack of potatoes. She can go out there with David Meltzer and put on a match that you will actually remember. A match that will be put on a pedestal probably over every other match on the card. That's just what she does. And she's used to doing that. It's second nature. It's just what she does. She was built, made, created, born to do this wrestling thing. So when I started this channel, you say, well, yeah, it's a pro Bray Wyatt channel and it's a pro Sasha Banks channel. It's for a reason. When I started this five years ago, plus over five years, those were the only two individuals that were truly captivating me. It's just when they were in the ring or just on the TV screen, they just captivated me. Something about Bray Wyatt and something about Sasha Banks. They were just next level. And Bray Wyatt, you know, he's not known as this technician. He's not known as a guy that's going to give you a six-star imaginary match, right? The imaginary six stars. Now, Bray Wyatt just, he captivated you in, in, when he was in there. A punch, a kick, a clothesline, a body slam, the backward spider, the sister Abigail. You could call it a match. And like The Undertaker, even if Undertaker only did a choke slam and a tombstone or a last ride, you were going to remember The Undertaker the entire night, even when that show was over and you're all driving home. The Undertaker was one of the brightest spots. That's Sasha Banks. That's Mercedes. Now, a lot of people, because of that, right, when you're so good at what you do, you get a lot of people that don't like you, right? And they start trying to bring you down, and they start saying you ain't so good, and they start saying you suck. Eh, for Sasha, she doesn't really let that get to her because she knows there's nothing farther from the truth. And she knows, you know, you find in life that some of your biggest fans are your your haters, right? That they, they absolutely catch all your work. They're right. A lot of haters are fans. They're just jealous and envious. They would love to be able to do what you're doing. They don't like the fact that you get to do it and you're doing it and they're not doing it. But they're not going to miss any of your matches. They're going to watch all of them um, and make sure maybe two, three, four times. So she knows that. That's why she doesn't let 
let any of that even get to her. She knows that the more she hears the naysayers, the more she's and the better she's getting. And the more she's gaining traction on getting everything she deserves in this industry. She is it literally one of the greatest, if not the greatest, women's wrestler on the planet today. Easily. And that's factual information. It's not just a subjective thing that fans are saying, right? Whether you're a fan of her or not, she is one of, if not the best, the greatest female wrestler on the planet today. And she is showing up, debuting tonight in AEW, which is the second biggest wrestling promotion in the United States. So this is massive. Now, does it move the needle? First and foremost, it's not just about the debut. It's about the plan you have for the wrestler. I say this all the time. This is why CM Punk never was really able to garner the ratings. They didn't have anything for Punk. He came in, put him in some high-profile matchups. Uh, he, he was trading insults on the mic with people like MJF or an Eddie Kingston or uh, Moxley. But it was nothing consistent that made you that n- made you need to tune in the next week to Dynamite or... Or that made you go, oh, it's Wednesday, man. CM Punk's got this thing going on with Mox tonight. Nothing ever made you truly feel that way. If you had the time, you would tune in. But nothing made you need to tune in. And the ratings showed you that nobody really cared about CM Punk. Not long term. In AEW. Edge is the most recent, right? Edge, all this hoopla surrounding his AEW debut. He shows up. And the ratings go backwards ever since. Just last week on Dynamite, they pulled a 740-something thousand. They're around 750 now. That's horrible, right? And you can't just blame Edge for that, trust me. But I'm saying he didn't bring anything. He didn't move the needle, unfortunately. And I always say it's not just Edge's fault. It's not just Punk's fault. It's not just Brian Danielson's fault or anybody else that jumped ship. It's the plan. You got to blame Tony Khan and creative. You can't just show up just because they have a following because they have name recognition and hope that that's enough to keep the fan base there to add more people. Oh, Adam Copeland Edge is in AEW. I got to start watching AEW now. You also have to have a plan, something interesting that he's in. A lot of people jumped over, tuned in and saw him just going back and forth with Christian again. Well, they've seen that a lot in WWE. I don't think they need to spend their prime time on Wednesday night rehashing it again. A lot of people told you, no, thank you. It's about what you do with these individuals. So with Mercedes, I absolutely, when you're talking women's wrestling, this is the biggest name AEW could possibly get. Easily, hands down. They just scored Sasha Banks. WWE let her go. Literally walk out. And then Paul Levesque McMahon didn't want to pay her enough money. Didn't want to give her equal pay to like Charlie Flair. And you say Triple H because he's the one that facilitates these meetings, obviously. Nobody is talking to anybody without Levesque McMahon wanting you on board. Levesque McMahon goes to bat for these individuals. He talks to the financial gurus, the Nick Khans and the others. And he's, he goes to bat for him. Listen, we have to get this person. I don't care what we got to do, who needs to be cut. This person has to be a part of our roster. And if HHH doesn't want you, he's not going to go to bat for you. And you're not going to get the money that you have earned. And so Sasha couldn't even get Charlie Flair money. If BC's running this thing, she'd get way more than Charlie Flair. Are you kidding me? But that's where we're at. HHH just let her slide. Uh, We can't really give you that much money. Sorry. Well, guess what? Now, Tony Khan can give her that money. Now, can Tony Khan give the creative that WWE failed to give her while she was there? Because that's all that Sasha needs, Mercedes. She needs the company to do right by her. She'll do the rest. She'll put that thing on her back. But can the company do right by her? Can the company go to bat for her the way she's ready to for them? And and they're also giving her a lot of freedom. It looks like she's going to be able to wrestle elsewhere too. I doubt WWE, but back to Japan, maybe Ireland, who knows? She'd be wrestling on a pyramid in Egypt for all we know. But she can wrestle elsewhere too, and that's what she really wants to do. She wants to do a little checklist of a lot of... A lot of wrestling in a lot of different places, a lot of different promotions, different countries. That that means a lot to her on this WWE hiatus. So she gets to do all that with this contract. Pretty cool. But tonight's massive. This women's division, I say it's massive because we've seen all these top names for the dudes come in. And you could say they don't move the needle because unfortunately they don't. 
and they just end up kind of becoming another person on the roster. And that's sad, but that's what Punk became. Edge, Adam Copeland Edge, is just another dude. He's another spoke on the wheel, unfortunately. But for the ladies, they need this. They need this. You, you know, this is... There's only a few times where they had somebody big come in that could have changed things, but unfortunately they didn't get anything. Soraya is the most notable, but I would also say Athena, Ember Moon. You know, she should have been much more uh, than what they allowed her to play and do. And most of the time you don't even see her in AEW now. But there's, there's another big chance. This is the biggest tonight with Sasha. This is their time. And this has been known for weeks that she is coming in tonight. And we're hearing even months. But definitely for weeks. So don't just have this all about one night and her just showing up, cutting a promo, and everybody going, holy shit, and then everybody tweaking out online about it over the next 48 hours. You better have a plan going forward. You have to now make this the moment where the women's division comes to life in AEW. That is is why I say this is one of the biggest nights in this company's history. Not just because of the name, but what it could, or at least should do, for AEW. This is massive. This is the chance for the one biggest area that AEW needs to clean up, and they need to clean a lot up. But the women's division has never been what it could have been, or should have been. Never. They never were able to put everything together. They had the pieces, right? You had the Brittany Bakers and Paige and Tony Storm. You had them all. They never knew how to put the ingredients together to form that one recipe that everybody wanted to partake in at the table. Well, now you got so you got the best of the best. A legit boss coming in tonight. You have... Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks. This is a massive score for AEW. I can't tell you the last time that I was able to tune in live to a Dynamite. I just don't get to. Sometimes I'm able to catch it in its totality afterwards over the next 72 hours, 96 hours. Sometimes I'm just able to check out a clip here or a fragment over here. But there's no way that somebody like BC can miss this. That's how big this is. So you say he doesn't move the needle, doesn't make people look twice. Well, BC's not one of those people. I'm looking, I'm not just looking twice. I'm planting myself in front of that TV watching. It's it sucks I can't be in Boston live to see Sasha in this big moment in her career. But she is still in her prime and she's ready to rock it through the stratosphere. Can AEW live up to their end of the bargain? That's the only question. But tonight. This is the biggest, one of the biggest nights in Tony Khan's career. It's not just another dude showing up to be another spoke on the wheel, no matter how bright and big his name is. This is the biggest female coming to your promotion at a time where your division needs it. Now the ball is in your court, Tony Khan, because you just got a boss. You can say a new boss in AEW, and this boss, if done correctly, can actually facilitate something special into AEW, a pulse that will get them off of 750,000 viewers a week on Dynamite, the flagship show, should not be getting three quarters of a million viewers after over five years. With that roster, they should be doing much better. We'll see if she moves the needle or not. We'll see if Tony Khan and AEW will allow her, will help her to do such. This is big for this channel for sure. A Bray Wyatt and Sasha Banks channel. And here we are in 2024 under the name Mercedes Monet showing up to an entirely different promotion. Oh, we'll see how it all goes down. And I assure you at some point within the next 24 hours, stick right here with the channel. Chances are I'm going to have a lot to say about this debut tonight. Until next time. And there will be that next time. Top guys were out. Boom, boom, BC. And his amplified unit saying, check you. Peace.